Last March I was here at CERN and the place was gripped with excitement. The Large Hadron Collider had just achieved its first collisions at 7 TeV and the physics programme was finally underway. A year down the line and I'm back, I'm going to meet the scientists to find out how things are getting on and whether they're any closer to finding that elusive particle, the Higgs boson. I'm here at the control centre of the CMS experiment. It's one of the two general purpose detectors at the LHC. I'm here with Guido Tonelli, spokesperson for the experiment. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, James. So you must be really excited. How close are you to discovering the Higgs? We are in good conditions, and I make this statement based on the experience of last year. Very quickly, we have been able to uh, rediscover and calibrate using standard model particles all known physics so far. So we have entered the new territory in which the Higgs boson could hide very quickly. And now that we are in this new territory, we are quite optimistic about uh, the future of the next uh, couple of years. What about the prospects of new physics beyond the standard model? As I told you, the fact that we have been able very quickly to discover massive particles like the top that are well known, and now we are entering new territory, means that we are able, for example, if supersymmetric particles are a symmetry of the na nature has chosen, we might be able to see them very quickly, even this year in 2011. Massive particles like SUSY in the region between uh, a few hundred GV up to one, 1 1.5 TV, we might be able to discover in 2011, with 2011 data. So you say, so SUSY and supersymmetric particles, that's, that's the same thing. I mean, can you just explain what is that? What are they? How do they come about? Yeah, supersymmetric particles are supersymmetric partners of known particles. For each known particle, we have to imagine there is another partner with higher mass, higher properties, that does not exist anymore in the current universe simply because there is not enough energy. It was produced during the Big Bang in equal quantity. But with the evolution of the universe, as soon as the universe became colder and older, as it is today, the particles needing more energy decayed. And now we have normal matter apart the long-living uh, stable neutralino, which is the lightest of the supersymmetric particles, and the gas of neutralino will be the origin of dark matter which keeps together the clusters of galaxies. So in terms of um, actual discoveries involving the Higgs and CZ particles, I mean by the end of 2012 when the LHC goes offline temporarily, are you confident that you will find these particles? Yeah, the, the Higgs will be the most challenging uh, of the searches because the standard model Higgs is a very elusive particle. We would probably need the entire statistics collected in 2011 and 2012 to be able or to exclude the existence of the standard model X in the region of mass between 115 GV and 600 GV, a huge region of mass, or if nature has decided that the Higgs mechanism is the right mechanism to, to explain the mass, to discover it uh, again in the next two years. Personally, are you, are you confident that you will be able to say yes, it exists, or, or no, it I'm exist. confident that we'll be able to give an answer, a definite mm. answer, this without any doubt. Eh? Clearly, this will depend, touching wood, on the good <laughs> performance of the machine, the accelerator, and the good performance of the detector. But if uh, the things will go well, as it has happened so far, there are no uh, no doubts that we'll be able to give a definite answer in these questions. And now that also because um, they announced at Fermilab that the Tevatron will cease operation by the end of this year, um, I mean, do you think in some way that could make people become a bit more sceptical of the LHC because there's no longer anybody there to verify what you're doing? Yeah, but at LHC there are first of all two big experiments, which is Atlas and CMS, that use completely different technologies and they are in very strong competition. So if one of us will be able to provide uh, the first hints of a signal, the other one will be able or to confirm it or to disprove it. And the two technologies are completely independent, so it is uh, very healthy to have this kind of internal competition to LHC. If you come with me, James, I show you some of these events. Brilliant. In this case, you see a collision between protons. They come from different opposite directions and they produce in the center of this uh, collision region, 
the new particles that we look for, in this case, we are not talking of new particles. These are well-known particles that we use to calibrate the detector. So what do the different colors signify on this? Yeah, the, this yellow, the yellow part uh, are the tracks, which are produced uh, in the tracker system, which is the heart of CMS, while the red and blue are release of energy reconstructed by the calorimetry. Muons are particle escaping the detection and uh, releasing signal in the inner part and in the outer part. And just say, for example, you know, say we, we found the Higgs here. Do you know what you might expect to see I and mean, what, what kind of pattern you would see on the screen? Yeah, there are uh, typical uh, signatures that we can uh, look at. For example, uh, a typical signature for the Higgs boson, one, let's say, the golden channel, is a signature containing four muons. So we look for events in which we have two pairs of muons each one, each pair with a high invariant mass, 900 or 100 GeV, 90 or 100 GeV, and those could be candidates for the Higgs boson. Clearly candidates, we cannot <laughs> give... Uh, so, so you're saying you need not just one, you need We, we need the statistics, them. we need yeah. significance, we, need the, we always have a background, we need to have an excess of events over an expected background. Uh, millions? Or? We need billions of events to <laughs> produce a handful of candidates. So as Guido mentioned, CMS's main rival here at CERN is the Atlas Detector. Let's go find out how they're getting on. So I'm here with Pippa Wells, who works on the inner part of the Atlas Detector. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> so how are things going? How, how are you getting on with the search for the Higgs? Well, we've just started up again this year. We've been running for a couple of weeks now. The guys are still setting up the accelerator. We've had four or five fills where the protons have actually come into collision with stable beams, so we're checking out the apparatus. They've increased the luminosity uh, over the last week, and they've done in one week what it took them three months to do mm. last year. So we've really hit the ground running and we're so by getting up to speed. So by, by luminosity, what, what do you mean by that exactly? Okay, that's an expression we use for the intensity of the colliding beams. It gives us a measure of how often we expect to make an interesting event. So you're looking for a certain event which could be a, a signal of, of the Higgs? If, if the machine continues to perform as well as it did last year, if the accelerator gives us the proton-proton collisions, then we're very confident that with that amount of data, we either have to have a firm signal for the Higgs or mm. to be able to say it's definitely not a standard Higgs. There's something else that has to be playing that role. Mm. Because if it has the very well-predicted properties of the theory, it can't escape us over the next couple <laughs> of years. And I mean, in terms of other things that might come out of the machine, I mean, are there other particles or other physics beyond the standard model that you, you hope to find? within the next couple of years? Yes, we're really also looking for uh, things beyond the standard model. So the Higgs itself is just the last piece, the missing piece of the standard model. What we're hoping for is to find something in addition. Mm. Um, one possibility is that we find a candidate for dark matter, a particle that could explain all the invisible mass out in the, out oh. in the cosmos. Is, is there a competitiveness between the two different experiments going on between the people involved on Atlas and the people at CMS, because obviously there could be big prizes at stake. Yeah, you, yeah, there's, cer there's certainly a, a friendly rivalry, should we say, <laughs> to, to make sure that we're you know, in top shape, we're collecting data efficiency, efficiently, that we're looking for all the different possible sorts of new physics, that we haven't like, forgotten one and the others come with a big discovery. That mm. would be uh, gutting. Brilliant. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for coming. So in the search for the Higgs, Will it be Atlas? Will it be CMS? Or will nature deliver something completely unexpected? Whatever happens over the next couple of years, one thing is for sure, these are historic times for particle physics. <laughs>